Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 7th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from London, England. Ukraine, of course, still at the top of the news, and we did on Friday receive a scam email that attempts to solicit donations. It claims to come from the Red Cross, and it does solicit donations in Bitcoin, so there's a Bitcoin address associated with it. At the time when I checked it, there were already $10 transferred to that address. What makes it a little bit complex is that there are a number of legitimate organizations that are soliciting uh, donations uh, via crypto coins. So not all of these crypto coin donation uh, emails are necessarily scams. But if you are inclined to help by donating, double, triple, quadruple check that the email and the addresses are legitimate. The same, of course, is also possible with uh, credit card uh, numbers that someone may be soliciting or uh, bank account numbers that may be provided as part of uh, these donation uh, requests. Always go to the original source, maybe a website of the organization or so that you're familiar with to verify these details. Then there are a couple other developments. Uh, first of all, Cogent, one of the large uh, network providers, has uh, disconnected uh, Russia from their network. That likely reduces uh, the bandwidth that Russia has available uh, somewhat. Haven't seen any other uh, connectivity providers uh, following uh, this move, and it was a little bit controversial uh, to uh, do that. So I'm not necessarily expecting it to happen, but uh, yes, sites in Russia are harder to reach. And of course, the same does also work uh, the other way around, in particular, since there is some continuing denial of service traffic. Now, regarding the denial of service traffic, Russia actually published two lists. One is a list of a referrer URLs that they are seeing being used as part of denial of service attacks. The idea here is that uh, tools like Low orbit ion cannon and such are being used where users are loading a web page that then sends requests via JavaScript. So uh, if your website is on that list, double check that there is no attack JavaScript on the site that you're not aware of. There's also a list of source IPs that participate in these denial of service attacks. Regardless what you're feeling about, you know, these denial of service attacks hitting uh, Russian websites, you probably want to know if uh, one IP address that you're controlling is on one of these lists. So double check them and uh, make sure that it's not a compromised device. If you're looking up IP addresses on the Internet Storm Center website, it should show up as a comment that that IP address is on that second list. I'll be importing this uh, later uh, tonight. Well, it turns out the NVIDIA breach, which originally didn't really look all that bad, well, was really, really bad in the sense that it did leak a code signing certificate and the associate private key that NVIDIA uses to sign some of its drivers or used to sign some of its drivers because the certificate is expired. Now, when I first saw a hey, certificate expired, no big deal. Wrong. In this case, it actually matters because the certificate is old enough where Windows doesn't actually check the uh, expiration date if the certificate itself was not timestamped. And indeed, VirusTotal already holds a couple of uh, pieces of malware, like for example, a signed version of Mimikatz that was signed using this leaked certificate. No evidence that uh, this malware was actually used in any attacks yet, uh, but well, I guess we'll find out if someone is paying close enough attention. You definitely should look out for anything that is signed with uh, this old certificate. I don't think anything still valid from NVIDIA should be signed using this certificate. And well, since we just had the Hermetic Wiper attack in Ukraine that used a stolen certificate, that one was a fairly obscure software company, but something like NVIDIA, of course, is much less likely going to get detected. 
Don't want to have your certificates stolen? Well, you may want to start by patching GitLab if you're using GitLab. About six different vulnerabilities are being patched here. The most severe one has a CVSS score of 9.6. That's CVE 2022-0735. And it does leak the runner registration tokens. Uh, these are tokens are used to authenticate and authorize CI CD jobs. And of course, with this, someone could impersonate one of those CI CD jobs. There's also another interesting vulnerability, not quite critical, but it does allow an attacker to obtain a list of all users registered with the particular GitLab instance. And of course, that could then be used for password brute forcing. And Cisco did fix two vulnerabilities in its Cisco Expressway series and Cisco Telepresence video communication server. The first one is an arbitrary file write vulnerability. The second one is a command injection vulnerability. Now this sounds bad, is bad. They assigned a CVSS score of nine, but to exploit either vulnerability, authentication credentials are required. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. The schedule of the podcast will be a little bit off this week due to the different time zone I'm recording in. So expect it to become live a bit earlier. I'm going to record him here uh, late in the evening uh, UK time. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.